Now this is the back of our MPCX and right here we have inputs one and this is one and this is two. Input one and two. Now here you can plug your microphone in. These are XLR jacks but also you can use a quarter inch in here as well which fits right in there. So it's a combo jack right here. And then I put microphones in here maybe one and two mics or if I have a turntable that has XLR output I'll pull it up in here. Now, next to it here, we have input three and four, left and his right. And so these are definitely quarter inch jacks inputs right here. And right here we have RCA inputs, right? And so you would ground your turntable here. Turn this ground it there. And then here, I can flip up the phono for my turntables. Or if I'm just using a line in here, I would just go line in directly in for a line in. Now right here we have our main output. This is our left and our right output. Now this output I would normally put into my monitors. So if I've got monitors inside the home or my little studio, I put my monitors right here. Now next to that we have outputs three and four, five, six, and seven and eight. This all depends on what you want to output from your MPC you would designate these outputs for different, I guess, mixes or subgroups I would send out of here. Now, right here, we've got our MIDI out. So we have A, B, C, and D. I can have four separate MIDI outs. I can go, let's say, a keyboard, another drum machine. I can go to a mixer. I may want to go to a uh, another sequencer. I can use these outputs for that purpose. I have two MIDI ins. I could be using a MIDI in from another drum machine or a MIDI in from another keyboard to trigger sounds or to play samples or just record the MIDI data into my MPC and then play it back through a specific program. Now above that we have our CV gates. Now the CV gate is an analog method of controlling synthesizers, drum machines and I guess other similar equipment but it doesn't use MIDI, it uses voltage control. If you're familiar with that, you have eight separate CV gate accesses right here. Now, right here, we have some MIDI inputs here. So, actually, outputs. These are MIDI outputs. I would use a typical compact flash card. I come right here also, and this is my MIDI output to my computer. So, I'll plug this in there, and that's a MIDI output to the computer. Here, I can save data to a flash drive. Here's one and two. So I can pull out a compact flash card. I've got one right here. And I would just pop that in there and I can save data to it. What we have here, this is our power input. And of course you get this with your, let me grab this cable first and put this cable to the side. You wanna come here and sort of like take this out. Uh, there's a special reason why you want to do this. You want to sort of protect the device from any sudden pulls or jerks. And you sort of mess up your jack there. So this piece comes off here. That's the piece right there. So I'm going to take this piece here. I'm going to put it around the end of my power input. So you'll see it right here. Let's pull this up. Make it easier. Like this right there. Put it something like that. That's good. Then I'll go back to here again, but first, make sure I can plug this in, like that. I won't do that, so we'll pull it down further. I want to make sure I can at least bring this cable to right there, which is good. I'll put it like that. I'll grab the part I want to screw back in here. I'll come here and screw this back in. Let me get this right. Whoa. And there you go. So now, if I pull on this, it will not mess up my input jack here for the power. Now there's one thing else I want to show you here, one more thing here, and that is the back of your flip up screen. I'm going to sort of like pull this out. So let's get this out. There you go. Now once you get it out, you come to here, and there are notches right here. 
that you can use and set it up to a certain notch height and leave it there and see once you get it there it stays right there I can put it down to here and it stays right there I can bring it down to the very last notch which is right there and I can apply pressure but the screen stays there so you want the screen to crash or bang or anything else and this is a great way to protect and keep your screen at the same height now once you're through with this you clip it on right here pop it right back in well here we have the headset right and this is the volume for that headset so I've got a plug here for my headset this is an eighth of an inch we'll pop this in here and then you can see there there's the headset icon known around the world as a headset and next to that we have here this is quarter inch you have a quarter inch headset so if you do you put the cable in there and you control your volume from here now next to that we have take this out this is a mix knob As you can see here we have mix three four and main right so this mix knob is used to adjust the balance between the main and the 3-4 signal in your headset. I may have a different input or different output going in there. Well, I can change that. So, for example, main is the signal sent from my main left and right out. 3-4 is the signal sent from the output of 3-4. So I can either go to 3-4 or go to main. And that affects the output of the audio you'll receive in your headset whether quarter inch or eighth inch and this controls the level of that volume now right next to we have our instrument one instrument two we have this rear input and this front input for one and two and those gains are seen on top of the machine so I can control the gain for example I get a bass guitar player coming over here I want to control the audio gain so I don't get too much clipping coming in from the bass guitar now next here we have a foot switch sometimes a foot switch you may have a foot switch to play start record or whatever you can put this right here quarter inch foot switch here for one and a quarter inch foot switch input for two I can come here to the SD card slot grab my SD card right there I got a Toshiba love the Japanese cards pop it in there and bam I'm ready to go I can save data to that card that card 64 gigabytes. I can save a lot of data to that card. And when you first turn it on, you get this sign here, MPCX. It's right there. It's our MPC. As the software loads up. And now, the first thing you're going to see right here is this. Select the demo. So you want to go to demo first. See here, select this demo. You can come here too. You click that there, that I sign. And this page allows you to load a demo project to get you working quickly with your MPC. In this case, we're using an MPC X. It can be turned off on customized or customized to include templates and recent projects. Do this in preferences projects default tab all right so I'll press okay right there so for example i can come here and load in techno and techno loads our progress bar it loads and we're in now if i come back here to home you want to look for preferences so we go to here project default new project i can come into here and look for the project I have available. In this case, it says demo, right? So I'm going to click hold this down. And now I can load a template. Move the cursor down to here. And I can use demo template recent. So whatever recent project I loaded up will load, right? I can select this. Now I can cut it off. I'm going to cut it off. So I turn the off button. It says here, do you want to shut down your MPC? I'll select the shut down right there. And now it's shutting down. I'll turn it on again. And of course, it's loading. It's loading up, we'll see. And it's changed now. 
I can select a current project or clips, audio tracks, clips, pop. I can go here to Future House. So there are other options here available and I can go to my most recent template. This is where to load other projects or if you're working with a project, you can select what you want to load when it turns on. I'll turn this thing on here. Oh cool, we got some audio output. Cool, we have some audio output. Now, right here, this knob is my record gain for inputs three and four. So I can control the gain right here. Obviously it's stereo, so it's three and four. This is the master. Turn this knob to adjust the volume of your main output. So if you have some stereo monitors that you're gonna use, this will control the output to them. Now next here we have our gain one and our gain two. Now these are for one and two inputs. Now you notice here I can turn these switches here and go to rear and those are the rear inputs right there. Now sometimes when I'm sampling records, particularly older records, they're going to have a different stereo field than today's records. Sometimes they'll be more guitar to one side, bass to the other. So if you're aware of that, know how to adjust your gains if you're going to sample from older records. Also here, I can turn these switches here and go to the front. There are also front inputs on the front of our MPCX. I can use those inputs and then these are switch to gain one and gain two for the inputs on the front of your MPC. Now here we have 48 volt phantom powering. Now some mics require that, particularly condenser mics. You need to add some power so you can get a quality audio input. You need to do that. Put that switch up and you now have 48 volt phantom powering. Now here this is our direct. So we have stereo and mono. Now currently in the background you're hearing my headset so if I turn this here, this is from direct or direct input. And then this is the main. Now here, let me turn this machine on. Here you'll notice that we have this rec arm. This is record arm. And press this button to arm or disarm the recording in the sampler or the looper. So if I do that, I'm able to actually start recording if the looper is on or not. Now, next here, I have read or write, and this is for automation. So if I'm reading back the automation within the MPC software, I'll select that, I'm gonna read it back. If I wanna start writing automation information, I'll select it again, and now it turns red from green. If I don't care about running the automation at all, I'll just come to here, hit that again, and now, as you can see, it's grayed out. It's pretty simple. Now also we have mute and solo. So here, I would mute what's ever seen right here, this little strip right here below my meters. And I can also solo it as well. And you'll notice here, on the monitor, so I press the mute, you don't see the mute, but you will see the solo. Now usually when I actually do the mute or solo, it will be the current selected program. In this section here, I've got transport. I can do input of data here as well. We've got F key, tap tempo. We got our main to track. And we also have data entry with our knob here, plus and minus, and also here with the numbers and an enter button and a plus and minus here. So basically, it's pretty easy. This is erase. You press erase, your screen will show you what you're erasing from the selected item in the menu. Pretty simple stuff. This is do and undo, or do and redo. Now, you'll notice there's red lettering underneath some of these buttons. And so if I hold down shift, I'm able to redo. In this case, I'm able to delete. Hold down shift again here, it's master. So if I tap tempo now, I'm tap tempoing that sequence. But if I press down shift, 
and tap tempo now that's the master tempo for every single track I make up on my MPCX. Pretty simple stuff. This is for a note repeat. I want to hold this down. I select a note. It repeats. And sometimes I want it to latch. So I'll go here, shift, latch, and then I can just pick notes I want to repeat. I go back here. It's not latched anymore pretty simple now next right here this is the F key once I select the F key right there I select the F key now these six buttons correspond to what's on my display which I'll show you next but first we want to explain more about our data entry and our transport section so these are numbers of course obviously one through nine and zeros right here. I may want to put a negative or a positive data input to that number. Happens right here. Once I select that number, I just press enter and it's in. This is my cursor, up and down, left and right, and then enter right here. I can enter here or enter here. It's my data wheel. Make it easier rather than putting the data in, I just turn the knob, select I want to turn the knob to it could be selecting a different program a different drum sound pretty simple stuff if I want to go slowly I can go plus or minus okay so here's my overview of my MPCX of course and I want to talk about now is the Q-Link section so this is the Q-Link here and this is really invaluable this is a great way for us to work within project program pad scene pad parameters and our screen controls also and also if I wanted to edit I just come to here and I press shift and I'm in edit that's really cool makes it easier for us to do now here once I'm in project and I'm in screen control you'll see with these 16 buttons here that right above them we have a display that displays the current edit mode so for example here I can do volume and panning here and then I can do here, I can do mute on or off. And this is for the project. Now here I have program, but I can do I can come here also in project and you'll notice once I hold the button down here that you'll see that information that's on these displays appear right here. The top one is off. So nothing appears here, but that is off. Mute, pan, volume. You'll also see right here this little button right here for Q-Link Edit. Now if I select that, you'll now see that I'm in Project, which matches this button right here. Those same parameters appear right here. Off, Mute, Panning, and the Volume. Right? I can just come to here and select that, and now I'm in Volume for right here. And this is all for Track 1. Now right here, you can see this is Q-Link 2. This is the data I can actually change. So I can put in audio track. I can go to program. I can go to re to return right here. So we're back here to mini track right here. And then I can change that also. So it's kind of easy to do because you have the ability to select the Q-Link knob you want to select. And then here you can change the data for that knob. I can go back here. I'm at my original knob. I have my data here for the master outputs and the parameters volume. So I come to here, I could change, come to here and change this. I come in, I would see volume. I click on volume right there, and now I have volume again. And so you see it again right here. Now, besides just pressing my Q Link buttons right here, I can also do that on my display. I come here to program, and now you see this? That changed the program. If I come here and go to pad scene, you now see a different pad scene. And the same thing also applies. I select the cube link knob. I can come to here and change the parameters for that knob. And it gives me all the available parameters that I can change. I can come here to pad parameters. I can select a Q link knob. In this case you can see I'm on knob number five, which is this one right here. Then I see the parameters I can change for knob number five. The mixer, the program, the parameter here is level. I can also come in and just double tap this. 
and I see all the params I can change for cubic knob number five when I'm in pad parameters. I can come here to screen control and now I can change anything for my screen control. And you'll see here, nothing much there, but watch as I can go out of this actually. And I want to go back to menu, back to main. And now you'll see this line up totally here. And this gives me all my screen controls. That means whatever I see here on my screen can be controlled. Here I have the BPN. This is the bars. If I have a loop, it goes from bar 1 to bar 2. This is the start and this is the end. This is a current track. So all the data appears here, but I can just change the data from right here from my Q-Link setup. Okay, so I want to explain a few more things here, and this is going to be full level. This is full level. I hit the drum pad. Oh, that's pretty loud. In fact, let me go back. I've got the wrong screen set up here. Let's go back. And I want to look. Here we go. Let's go back once again. Here we go. Okay, good. So I want to explain here. This is full level. And I'm going to hit the pad. And that's full level. And I'm turning full level off by this hitting that full level again and now if I just tap the pad lightly I get one level I strike it harder I get a full level pretty simple stuff and sometimes you just want to have a lower set of levels so I will come to shift press shift down then I will go here again the full level the words below say half level click that and now no matter how hard, or hard I hit it or how soft I hit it it gives me that half level right there right? and that's half level and that's set to about uh, 64 velocity rather than, rather than the full 127 it's set to 64 now here turn it off we also have 16 levels now 16 level works on the basis that's going to divide whatever parameter I suggest into 16 levels so for example now we're in velocity so this first velocity is pretty low. No matter how hard I hit it, it's going to always be at velocity. Pad 16 is full velocity. No matter how hard, or how hard I hit this one, it will still be that same velocity level. So I'm going to tap each pad, and you'll notice the level increases all the way to the top. That's velocity. Let's go to tuning. This is tuning. A chromatic scale. And here we go. This is filtering. That's filtering is layers. If I have layers in, layers in. This is the attack, the amount of attack. So the strongest attack is one. The least attack is 16. Next we have decay. Of course, when you have a sound, there's that attack when you hit the drum. And then there's that sustain. And then it decays. No matter what it is, it could be a trumpet, a horn, or a vocalist. That first note's there, you hear the note, and then somehow it decays off to the next note, or just decays off totally, of course. Now you don't hear this too well here that much because it's a short note. But a louder note with more sound to it would be different. So, for example, let's say I go back into here, and we're going to leave 16 levels, and we're going to we'll, this. we'll go back to here. I selected this note here. And you hear the decay happening, and there's a decay there. So, in 16 levels, I can do velocity, tuning, filter, layer, attack, and decay. To leave it, it's pretty simple. You're going to press close right here, and you're done. You're out of it. Now, of course, we have a bunch of banks, the classic Akai MPC thing, right? And right here, this is A bank, B bank, C bank, D bank. I'll press shift, and I've got E, F, G, and H. Pretty simple stuff. I get back to here so I can have unlimited sounds, a lot of tracks, a lot of data going on through my entire system. And this is our new MPCX. So, we're going to get started now. I'm going to show you some more on the inside of your MPC and the software.
Okay, so here is our transport section right here. And here we have locate. I press this button here, I'm in locate. And what locate allows me to do is to locate anything pretty much on that particular track. And so here I can go to the end of the track if I want to, or I can go to the beginning. And this normally is in terms of bars. And I can also change that too as well. Go this bar to the last bar. And then here, when I have locate depressed, I can go through events. So each event and its step, I can start from right here. So I can keep tapping this back to the beginning, to the very first event. And then that very first event, I'll see whatever. It could be a kick drum or a snail be there. The next event could be a guitar or some other sample sound that'll be there. So this goes in steps to that event. Now right here, we have our record, overdub, stop, play, and play start. So I play start, I play from the beginning of that sequence. If I play here, it'll play from wherever I left off at. So if I left off at a certain place in the playhead, and I press play, it'll automatically play from where it was left off at. Now if I want to record over an entire sequence, I would just press record, and then it would activate record and play, and that would erase whatever on that sequence. At the same time, I could record to that sequence. But if I want to keep what I have and just overdub, I can just come to here, select overdub, and now I keep what I've got and I can add to the sequence. So here I'm loading up my MPC again, and now we're going to create a brand new kit. So we're loading up here, and once it does, it finds my computer. And here, of course, if I want to go to standalone, I press here and I'm in standalone mode, but I want to be in controller mode. Here we are, blank empty screen and what we want to do now is we want to sort of like load up create our own kit right here in program 001 now when you start your mpcx and the software this is what happens you get an empty project right here right it's empty so i want to go here to browse i'll press the browse button i'm right there in browse right and wow look at this i'm already in the sun so i go to browse right here and now i'm in browse and i can look through here and pick sounds What's the sound I want to use, let's say? Okay, I want to go to load, and now that sound is loaded into my sample pool. I go here to assign, and now it's already right there. It's right there, right? I can clear that pad. I don't want it there. I want to put something here. So I'll take this sound, and now, and now it's right there. So by just clearing the pad, I can select any pad I want to select and place that sound there. Hit it. It's there. Hit this here. It's there too. I can come to here and clear that pad. Now it's just here in that pad. So now I'm, I can assign sounds to all the pads by just filling up my sample pool. I go back to browse. I'm here in sample right there. I can find other sounds I want to use. Let's get that sound. Load that up. It's loaded in. I go back to assign samples. It's right. That's it there. I come to here. I want to load it there. The same sample. I got the wrong one. I go to here. Put that one in. There. And they're right there. So I could not see which one was here, the 808 or not, but it's obvious now what is the right sample. I want to fill these pads up with samples, and it's pretty easy. Now, once I do, then I just want to go in and name the program. So I'm still picking out some sounds here, like that one there, let's load that one up, get that one too, so we can fill up our little kit going on here, ooh, that's not bad, and we want to find a few more sounds, nice ride cymbal there, we already got some hi-hats, well, we got tons of hi-hats here, which is kind of cool, just like scroll through sounds. We find a few more kick drums. That's a nice kick drum there. Another kick drum there. And we're just getting some sounds here we can probably use. Pop that in for the kit too as well. Get that one there. That's not bad. That one too. So. 
we got some sounds to go back to assign. I've got all these sounds right here I can assign to the pads. So I can come in here, I can look at the signs. They're also based on the list I think I had. Yep, they sure are. So I can come to here, put that sound there, come to here, put that sound here, come to here, put that sound here. So look, we got some samples. Plenty of sample sounds, so you can create your own kits. Okay, I've got all these sounds. I want to name the program. It's pretty simple stuff to do. I'm going to go back to menu. Then I go here. It says main. Menu, then the main. Here I'm in main again. We see here in the drum program, we have program 001. But first, I want to get to here. Go to here. Bam. Select that. I can change the name. I'm going to call this and put a space bar on this uh, test kit. Right? I'll press do it and now it appears right there. You can make and name your own kits. It's that easy. So now what I want to do is I want to create a drum sequence. And what I want to do is load a kit this time. In the last video of course we actually created a kit. But there are some really good kits you can find in the MPC drum content. So let's find that. I'm going to go to Browse now. Now here in Browse, I've got a kit selected already. So let's blank this out of here. And here I'm already in this MPC factory content expansion pack. And what I want to do here is look for kits I want to use, right? So uh, generally I'll come in here and I'll look for some kits or groups and I don't see much in there. This is all programs. so. I'm going to go back out, so I'll go back to here, and you'll see here on top, it'll tell you where you are, which folder you're in, and what's going on in that folder. So here's the drum kits here, I can select that, I'm in there, let's go back to here, go to Legacy, I'll select this, and here I'm in Legacy, and we see all the older MPC uh, kits and programs that came with it. So I want to go down to the MC500, I'll open this up, and if I'm looking for a kit, I think it's worthwhile using. Uh, I can also search it. So you can come here to search directory. I'll select that and I'll come here. I'm going to put in hip hop kits. Let's see if you can find it. And there you go. It found it. So you can see I can find a kit also find the name of it in case you got a lot of programs. It'll find that program. I'll select load right here. And now it's loading up the kit. So we've got the kits loaded in right there, right? So I want to go back here to menu and I'm going to go back here to main and I can see here in the program, I have hip hop kits selected. So my program is ready and I have a blank track. So what I want to do here is go to grid here and here's where I would see it. I want to set probably what, how many bars it's going to be. So in this case, I'll keep it just two bars and I keep it pretty simple. And you can see the beats and the bars here, bar, beats, and the ticks. These are the bars here. This is track one. And here along this edge, this is the bank. So this is 1A. So A01 to A16. This is pad one, pad 16, and the A bank. So I can use those notes. Now what I want to do is get a tempo. Sometimes you're not sure if your tempo, so what you can do, you can tap your tempo in. So in this case, I can say, let's see. So I tap that in there and then I can play it back. But in order to hear it back, my tempo that is, I want to go back to home. I want to make sure this metronome is on. See this metronome is on here? And so what I want to do is make sure what's enabled is the record and play function. So I'll come right to here. And I can see that here, it's either off or in play or record. So I have it in record and play that I will be able to hear the metronome. So let's tap out of that. I'll press play start. And now we hear the metronome. I can practice. Now I want to make sure my quantized value is correct too as well. So, 
here I am, I've got the sequence set up. I'm going to go back to my grid value here, and I can see we're set for the proper quantize. Here it says 16th right there. So right there it says 16th. Let's go back up here. Go back to A. There we go. And now we're set for 16th notes. So I can press record. And once I press record, you'll notice, of course, that the lights will be blinking for record and play. And I can press start. And it starts to record. If I hit the pad, it'll start recording something. Now I'll press stop here. I'm going to go back into the home again here. And here we're going to go back to metronome. Now, sometimes in metronome, you want to have a counting. That means you want to have maybe one, two, three, four, and then start, right? And that's our counting. So I'll come to here also, and I can have a counting and record. And now I have a counting for record. And so I'll close out of this. I'll press play again. Now I'll press record and press play. And you notice it just started. Let's start again. I press record, got to play again here, and I'll press play start. Two, three, four. So now I've recorded something in. You'll notice also that once you start recording, you've recorded something in, and it goes to the end of the sequence, your light for record cuts off, and then it goes into overdub. I have the ability now to overdub or add stuff on top of it. If I were to go back and start recording again, it would record over that same sequence. So I can even practice here. I took off the recording. I put the overdub back in to record. Overdub on to record. Turn overdub off. I can practice. I can use no repeat. I hold down no repeat. I can select eighth notes. I'm able to record the eighth notes. I'll hit overdub, hold the pad down, then I'll hold down note repeat. And you can hear it's recorded in. I'll take off the overdub. That's done. the snare drum. Now I'm going to record this in. I stopped overdub. I stopped overdub again. And now you've got that in there. The extra bass drum. Now, let's say I don't like that. I want to add something else. I can come back in here. I can do the undo. Let's do undo. Now let's go back to grid first. And here in grid, you can see what's going on. Let's do undo. Undo. I go back to grid here. And you'll see. Let's go back in here. I can also come in here, select the erase, and I can erase something. I can also come in and write, and write something right there. Now, if I don't like that, I can undo it. It's gone. I can come here also and say I want to do more than I see what this whole, I can do like this with my finger, right across the edge there, press play back. And now I'm recording a part just using my finger right here on my display. If I don't like it, I can press undo, it's gone. We'll press play start again. I 
I can select individual notes I want to get rid of. I can come to here and select a range of notes. This range I want to get rid of, right? I'll do that. I can press stop here. I can come to here and erase these off of there. That's the range I don't want to have at all. Just get rid of all those notes. So you can see we can actually do undo. We can write notes by selecting the pen. We can come here and select the eraser. I can come here also and I can select a certain number of edits to events I want to edit. So you'll notice also while I was actually recording that this number here changed from 16 to 8. That's because when I went to note repeat, you'll notice here at the bottom of our display, there are different note values, from quarter notes to 64th notes, and then you can take the triplets as well. So I was here, and you notice that the values now are actually the grid changes also along with my changing the time correction. So in this case, I'm 16th notes, and you'll see we have four beats or four divisions, subdivisions of every beat. And I can go to 30 seconds, and you'll see it changed again. And I can do 64 too, and it changes again. You really can't see that here on the screen, but you can see it in the computer as that changes. Now, in this case, if I go to 16th notes, and I come in and write something in, let's see. Let's try to put this one in here. I come here, I'm just going to do this here. I'm going to just drag right across this one here. I'm going to do the right. And I'm going to drag right across it here, across to the top, across over it. And that changed. If I press, don't repeat again, I go to the 32nd notes. And let's say I want to get rid of this. So I'm going to go here to erase, and I'm going to erase all this off of here. And it's all gone. Now I'm going to write. I'm going to write here. I'm going to write them in. 30 second notes. I'll play it. Okay. You get the point. So I'll erase. It almost gets a little hard when you have so many notes there to erase. There you go. So they're all gone now. I can play it from the top again. And they're gone. So we can change the value of the notes that we want to record within the sequence by changing this timing correction. Now here in our grid mode, here in our grid mode, I have nudge, edit start, edit end, transpose, and velocity. Let's sort of work with nudge first. So if I'm in nudge, I have the ability to move these events anywhere within my grid. And how this works is once that event is selected, if I go to here, tap it, that event is selected. And then I would just turn the data wheel. As you can see, it's moving. Or I can use the plus and minus buttons under it. Minus sending it to the left and plus to the right. I can move that event. Now this is all based on my grid value. Now, so here we see that this is 32nd notes we're set to. So I can move it in that direction. So if I can always change it before, I can change my value pretty much by just selecting the note repeat button and selecting the value below. So what I can do is press play, even in play, I can change that value. Let's go back to notch. Go back to here, start, and go back to the same track. We're in track mode, so make sure you don't do that. You want to make sure you're in the actually here. And then what I want to do is sort of like move that snare drum now. Yeah, moving it around. And I can do this while the track is playing. So you can get to audition how that particular event will sound as you move it. Also, I can change the start value. So here, we go to edit, and I can use the plus or minus on my data wheel, 
And as you can see, I can extend the start point of that particular note. Now, as you see, it goes right back to here. If I can go to undo right there, I can go to here and do the end as well. I can change the ending of that note. I can do undo, and I'm right back where I started from. And I can also transpose that note. I can come into transpose. I'll play it, keep it in motion here. Matter of fact, I can transpose more than one. Let's select all these snare drums. And then I'm going to move it up. So in this case, in transpose, I'm moving it up to the next pad. As you can see, we're right there. Press stop. And now I have a new snare drum. And I can also change the velocity of any event I'd like to. So here I'm selecting velocity. If I go to right here, we can see velocity levels. Let's make it bigger. And now we can really see the velocity levels. And so I can see the velocity levels of everything. So let's say, for example, these are the snare drums. I want to bring them down somewhat. And you'll notice here, one, two, three, four, I'm bringing the value of those snare drums, their velocities down. I'll play it back from the top again. Now, as I do bring the velocity down, you'll notice the color of the events. And of course, the velocities change. The lower I bring it, it turns to amber at the lowest point. And the higher up, it's at red for maximum level. Sometimes I will hit up here somewhere and I'll be there and all of a sudden everything will move. Like for example, I'll come to here. That's what happened to you too as well. You'll be here, you're looking at this something, you're playing back this track and you want to get back to it and you can't. So as I see, you can see right now, as I pull down the velocities, I'm already almost here in B bank. I can't see um, a1. So I can come to here and I want to sort of scroll to something. So this helps me zoom around on my system to see where I'm at in the grid mode. So here, you go to the zoom. I want to see where I'm at here in the zoom level right here. Good. And then if I wanted to select something now, I go back to select. I would select all these sounds right there. Oops, let's select all these sounds here. This will be my hi-hats. I'll select those. I'll go to velocity here, bring my velocity up. I want to bring all the hi-hats down. And volume. And now they're down. Or bring them lower. Or up. And this is where I can set the levels of each sound within the kit. Now also I have here don't snap, which means that if I play a note, it won't correct to the nearest value set up by the system when I set my quantized value. So for example, I can come to here. So I'll come in here with the juice. It's just not even, that's not even going correctly. It's not even saying, okay, it should be here or there. It's playing it back the way I played it. And that means it's not snapping to the grid. So in case you want to give that human feel to one particular sound, you can use don't snap anywhere. And I can do the undo. In fact, let's zoom back in here. And then I'm going to come here and do the undo. And those sounds are going, I'm going to get rid of my velocity here. And then I'll come back in here again. I'll press overdub, play start. And I recorded it in without the value. I can undo here, go back to snap, and once I do it again, I'll do overdub, play start. See, so that just 
out of time because I'm asking 30 second notes. So know your note value when you actually do this. So in this case, I can come back to here to do undo. I'll come back to no repeat. I'll go to 16th notes. Let's make it even worse. We'll go to eighth notes. And now I'll press overdub. I'll press play from the start again. So I played really different, uh, really off, and it corrected where it was at, totally. And that's how we can use the don't snap, use the don't snap to make sure that we can have that human feel or turn don't snap off and make sure we have that quantized feel from the drum program. Okay, next what I want to do here is sort of show you can actually pinch and zoom in so I can pinch and zoom out and I sort of zoom into where I want to be in this grid and I can move it up to of course here as I pinch and zoom as you can see that there now I'm hearing this value now notice here as I try to pinch and zoom now I can't here I am I'm just adding notes here in this case let's get rid of that when I try to touch the screen I have the pencil tool selected the erase tool I would just erase notes if I touch the screen here in selector I can't do pinching, but if I go to here with my magnifying glass selected, I can pinch and zoom in to where I want to be within the grid. Now, before I was showing, I can actually change the note repeat values and actually also change my quantized values. You see it here uh, at the top, right underneath the track. I can also just press shift. And once I press shift, you'll notice here at the bottom of the grid, you'll see we have TC, cut, copy, paste, mute, and solo. So I can come to here and press TC for timing correction, and we see the timing correction dialog box. Now here in this box, you'll see we have the start, the end point, the length, and legato. And here you'll see right now my time division set to eighth notes. I can just move the data wheel to select it. I gotta go up here first to get where I wanna be at here in this in this program here, which is right here. I can select it by just tapping it. And as I just tap, I can figure out one, one bar for my time correction or just do uh, 16th notes. And here, if I wanna add triplets, I do that and now I have 16th note triplets. Here I'd have eighth note triplets. Here, quarter note triplets. And I can select this for all events or selected events. Just for selected events, or I can select a range, and that particular range I would select would be, let's say, quarter note triplets. I would have the strength, the window, and of course, the swing value. In this case, I can deselect that. It's not enabled anymore. And I just want to have 16 note triplets. Once that's done, I can press do it. And here we are, we're right back here with 16th notes. And you can see the grid is up to that value. And I can just come back in here also and sort of get even more here. As you can see here, as I pinch and zoom in, we get not just the A pad bank, but the B, the C, and some of the D bank. And I can also zoom back out, scroll back up. And here, I may just want to just get the A bank. So, And there we go. We have the A bank. That's how we can pinch and zoom and change our time and correct value. What we want to do now is uh, pretty much go back to home. And once you've created your sequence or you started your song, you pretty much want to save it. You don't want to lose anything. And so also, uh, I'm looking here for one thing I want to change, which is this BPM. I tapped it in, of course, but maybe it's not going to work for me. So I can come to here, I'll double click that, I'll tap it twice. And now I have my BPM window open while it's playing. I can come in here and go, uh, and there you go, I'll press do it, and there you go. And I can also come in here and increase it too. I'll press stop, got my BPM. So next, I want to probably save or name the sequence. I can come to here, double tap that. This is the sequence there. And I have to name it, I'll come right here. I can name it. So I can call this uh, beat. Oops, let's get the A in there. 
There you go. And press do it. And that's the beat. I can name the track. I'll press do it. The track is named. The kit is already named, right? And so at this point, I like it. The next thing to do is to save it. I've got the sequence done, track renamed, sequence renamed, got my program, and now you want to save it pretty much, right? So to save, you can see here in the bottom, it says browse, uh, the bottom, it says save. I can press shift and I can press that button and now it turns to amber and I'm here in the save. Let's leave this actually. And another way to do this is to just go back here to menu. And then here in menu, you'll see this disk icon. You select this and it gets you there as well. Well, because I come to here, I say I want to save it to call this new beat. And I can press do it. And now I can save that file as that. And I can come in and I'll press save. And now it's saving it. Saving the samples and everything. And I have it saved to the hard drive. Okay, so I've got everything saved already, right? So I have a new track selected here, and I'm going to use the same program for that track. And then I'm going to come back in here and press uh, chord overdub. I've added something to this project. I'll press shift and save, and it saves it right back to that project again. So I can add stuff after I've saved it. And okay, add some more stuff, add some more stuff. And then you want to make sure you keep saving so you don't lose what you just recorded. Now, to find that project, let's say you turn your machine on, you want to load it up, and for the next day or a couple days later, you want to find it. So you go back here to menu, and then we want to go to browser, right? Or pretty simple, if I was back here again in this part here, I would just go to browser directly. Here I'm in browser, and then I'll see it right here in the NPC stuff. I get there, and there it is, new beat under project, the .xpj file. I come right to here, sequence. There's, what's in the sequence? Let's see, one sequence is right there. This one sequence. I come to here. It's the program. I have this program here, which I created, right? The audio, which is nothing right now. And I also have a program here, which is the original program that I have when I turn the machine on. So this program, audio 1001 and program 001, are just the files that are automatically loaded into the machine when you actually start up. And then here on the samples, I see all the samples I have loaded in that belong to that project. And this has all been saved to my MPC stuff drive. So we've got our sequence going on here. And sometimes I would like to change the pitch of some drums, maybe add an effect, or even change the panning of a drum or the overall program. To do that, I'm going to select here, Home, and we're going to go to Program Edit. Now here in program edit, I have the ability to change. You can see here on the left hand side, master the pad, simultaneous play, and mute target. So here in master, I have the ability to come to here and change the semitones of anything in the entire program. So if I hit, let's say for example, and I'm hitting these pads here, and I take this and I'm going to use my data wheel, everything is changed pitch wise. The entire program is changing the pitch of every sample in that program. I can also fine tune all the samples in that program. And this is, you can play here sometimes, but if you're going to fine tune to a pitch, it works out really great. And I can also say for pad here, I can change my pad volume. And then that's lower in volume compared to that, right? I can also change the padding. I come here, okay, I'll change the padding for that. So I can come here and change anything. This padding here can be changed to here. So I want one go to the right, and this will go, go to the left. So I can change the padding. Now what I can also do is change the ability for sound to sound a little bit different and add more sounds to that one sound. For example, here is this sound, which is the kick drum. I may want to use that kick drum too. I want to change that sound. 
So what I'll do is I'll hit this sound here, which I know it says pad A1. I'll move my cursor over here to this simultaneous play. And here I can add four different sounds. So here in simultaneous play, I can scroll up. I know I want to use the sound on pad A13. And now you hear them both play at the same time. I can go to here. There's A14, A15, A16. So I can take any pad and play at the same time with the original. And I can add more. If I have a lot more samples, I can keep adding them in. I can add the four different pads. That works like ripping. You got a pretty big program. I can also come to here and get rid of sounds. It's back to the original sound it was. I can come here to mute a sound. Now, a classic mute would be hi-hats. That's my hi-hat. And the one I would like to cut off or mute would be the open hi-hat. So this is a close. That's the open hi-hat. See that one? So as you can see, it's already been selected here. All right, I have it there is A6. A6 is that sound. And I come to here. I'm tapping this one. So if I hit A6, it cuts it off. If I hit A6, and let it to stand and decay, it comes off by itself. So the hi-hat opens and closes. But if I come to here, and I'm cutting them off and playing the other one all in one motion, it's pretty cool. So for example here, if I, I can come in and record the hi-hat. Now you got it. And so now you can see it's cutting that high and off. I can also add effects. So um, let's, let's go here to effects. And I can add effects to any sound I'd like to. And so let's say we want to add an effect to this sound. It's already have an effect on it. See that? I already added an effect to it. And it's pretty simple. Let's sort of get rid of this effect. It's gone. I'll come in here, grab that sound. I'll stuck this here. Then I'll turn my data wheel. And now I'm gonna scroll down to an effect I had before. There was this delay. I'll put this delay in. And now I can also edit that delay. You see it said for eighth notes. Here we have the ratio, left to right. The dampening of the feedback. The feedback, which is 40%. And our mix value is at 50%. So I can come in here and say I want to play that sound. I'm going to overdub play. And so now it's playing in the system. I can come back here and change it from eighth notes. I go to 16th. Let's try something else. You can see we can change it. I'm changing the value of that delay while the beat's playing. So it's a great way to sort of check out, see how that delay would actually sound or any effect you would use when you're trying to see if it'll work in the program. And that's like an add an effect within the program. These are some of the features that you can do, but of course you can do samples, you can change your samples, reverse them, you can do panning, we can do filter if uh, filter an envelope actually, and here we can do LFO modulation too as well. Okay, so now I've got a beat here, it's set up and ready to go. And what I want to do next is sort of add a new program. So we're gonna go to a new track. And here we're in track number two, which you can see the bottom here we have program 001. Now, if we go back to track one, you see where you have a program called Hip Hop Kids. So this is a brand new program. So what I want to do now is make this a keyboard program. So I'm going to come to here. I'm going to select the keyboard icon here in my track view. And then here you'll see it turns to keyboard program. Well, next what I want to do 
is I tell select the sound, right? To stick in my program. But first, I want to come in here and sort of name this program. So I'm going to come right here. I'm going to call it Bass. And press Do It. And now it says Bass Program. Next, we want to select the sound for the Bass Program. I'll go to browse and I already have some sounds selected here in my library. These are actually in my drum content here, my factory content. I'm in the drum kits. I'll press enter. I have the audition set up already here for auto audition, a level that I'm comfortable for hearing back these audition sounds. I'll close this out. I can audition that way. I'm just going to scroll down and there's the bass on I like. So I want to load this one in. That's loaded in. I'm going to go to the next one below that and load this one in. Get loaded in there. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to the menu. And then I want to look at program. Now here in program, it says base program already. And from here, now I'm in base program, I can select my sounds. But I already press sample here. I press sample again, and now I can see layers for my base program. So usually when I'm doing it with a drum program, I can put them on different pads. But in this type of program, which is a keyboard program, if I put these sounds in, all the pads will be able to play this one sound. So here I want to select the sound to where it's going to layers here. I'll double tap layers. And I want to pick the bass. Here's one bass right there. I'll pick that bass right there. And then I want to come to here. And I want to pick the other bass too as well. And so I have two bases here that I have in the system. And what I want to do is sort of like set them up so they'll play properly. The samplers are in here already, right? And so if I come back to browse here and I'm going to go back here to main view, go back to menu, and I'm here, those sounds are on the pads. And now we'll set them up. We're going to turn mute off. This is too low, obviously, right? So if I go to D, that's D, and I'm going to go to the back, and I'm going to go one up, up one more level. I'm going to press Shift and go to F. So you see the sounds are there. But A is low. It is like 0C. So I want to get up to Shift. I'm going to go to F here. Or I go to G. You can hear the sounds there. So now I'm going to go back to program. I want to edit this program. So this is the program. That's the base program right there you can see. And now I want to go back to edit program. So I'll go back here to this view. I'll go to edit program. And here I want to edit these sounds. So we're going to go back and sort of change the pitch of these sounds. I'll go back to the first one. I think we'll just take this one out actually. Make that none. So the sounds are there. Now I'm gonna press shift, I'm gonna press F. So I can see you make a skill of it. And that's the bass sound. Now I can go here again. Let's go to Shift. I'm going to go to E now, E Bank. And I've got a bass sound there. So I can also, if I want to, if you want to, you can always come to here. You can change the tuning of your sound. Get the right pitch you want. You can even fine tune that sound here. And you can also increase or lower the level of that sound. I can go back to my main menu, go back to main here. So I can put this in, let's record this into the beat.
that's how I can take a sample in as a base sample and create a key group program. So I've got my base sound here. And what I want to do next is sort of work with the program, the key group program. So I'm going to go back to my menu, program edit. And here we are. And you can see we have three little dots there for samples. And so I'll select this again. And here we can see this is the bass sound, which I can trash, obviously. And then I can change the pitch to fine tune the level. And I can hit this again here. And then we have the offset here. And I can have different layers and offset the sample and how it's played. In this case, it's up to zero. That means once I hit the pad, it's going to play that sound right where it's at. Right? So I can also go to here, pan velocity. So here, I can change the panning. Let's play the sound back. This is based on velocity start. So when the velocity starts to hit, it will change that. And this is the velocity end. So the velocity actually ends in the beginning because we're actually hitting the pad first and then in the velocity end. So if I do this here and I select this and I turn this back by one, you don't get anything. No velocity whatsoever. It's a very short sample. So I put it back at 127. And that's what I want to really show you is here in the filter section. And here we have a filter for that one sample. And so the filter type here is low. So what I'm trying to do is let only the low frequencies pass through this filter. And there are several levels of the filter type. We have the one, which is low one. We have two. We have four, six, and eight. If I go in here where it says high, it's only letting the high frequencies pass through here. And so they're also from one to two to four to six to eight. Then here we have our bands. And these are just bands to specific frequencies. This is a bypass filter. And this is two pole. So there are other filters here, but primarily for this bass that I'm gonna use two looks the best for me. You can experiment with what you want to experiment with. So now, what we want to do here is I want to check out some other features here, show you what we can actually do with this sample. So for one, we can also change the resonance in the envelope, which won't affect this sample. It's not really a long sample, it's a very short one. But we can affect the attack, the decay, the sustain, and release. That means the attack, the time it's hit, the decay, from the time that I struck the sample to where it's going to decay, but it must sustain over a period of time that decay before it's released. And that's what this ADSR stands for. And that's this filter here. This is for the filter envelope. So here in the filter envelope, let's say for example, I'm playing the sound. You notice that the filter envelope just affects the filter. Next, I have here my low frequency modulation. And here I have it set to amp, as you can see there. I'm not trying to change the pitch or attack. The pitch has already been set up. And this is based on velocity sensitivity. And here's the panning as well, as you can see. And if I get the panning here and I press this, it's 
panning based on velocity sensitivity. As it struck, it's panning mainly to the left. When I get back here, it's not normal pan I've already set. And now right down here we have the rate. This is the rate at which it's going to oscillate. So here, I can come down to here, play this. I'm gonna get down here, amplitude. So it's wavering, or rather oscillating the amplitude. I can do the right here filter as well. value here for the 67 I have set here for my rate and I can also change that sign there as well this is sawtooth this is square triangular but I prefer to have the sign And you can see it's wavering in time and in sync to the beat. Now, I want you to experiment if you get a chance. Experiment when you actually do create a program to understand more of how this works. We have more lessons on it in our website, of course, at SK Recording School, where we get pretty much in depth about how to deal with the program. But this is very important to help you to create some really cool sounds. Now, I can experiment and change the sound even more. Let's put the sync in. So if I go to here, that's eighth notes. So it's syncing and wavering in eighth notes for the oscillation. Let's use half notes. I can always change the amplitude. Change my filter. So it gives it some sort of feel with that half note. So it has that feel on the half note. Even increase it. I can also go back to my filter. I can change my attack. Matter of fact, let's change the attack. Let's change the release too. And change the sustain. And you can see it gets that driving feel to it because it's actually going in time to the beat. I set it for the half note. So on the first beat and then the middle beat, which would be three. It's giving a little punch feel to a little exaggeration to the feel. So working with your program to adjust your filter envelope, your low frequency oscillation modulation, and even add an effect if you can. You can add an effect right here. You can maybe you want to come in here. You can add a compressor or get even a delay and get some sort of feel out of that one sound. But it's pretty interesting and you can create some pretty cool sounds. Okay, take two on audio track. So here we have our system set up with a key group. If I go to this track, here we're set up to view the drum program. This is a key group program. I want to do audio now. Now I want to put audio into this track. And you may want to bring a rapper in, a guitar player, bass player, maybe a keyboard player. Bring his own keyboard in. You want to record them directly into the system. And this is how it's done. So normally I'd come in here. I would plug it in. And I might go to this section here. I'd have a gain here, a gain here. I might have a keyboard player left and right. I would sort of, if it's plugged in the front, I would go to front here. If it's the rear, I'd switch this to rear. 
in this case, would be the front. And I've had a microphone, and someone's actually singing something. I had a condenser mic. I'd flip this switch here. I'm in 48 volt phantom powering. It's on that way when I'm using a condenser mic, I get the proper level. And once that, all that's done, I'm ready to record. But I have an audio track here. I can arm the recording, but we want to see actually the channel strip. So I'll select this little icon right there for the eye, and now I'll be able to see the channel strip. Now what we're going to do here is sort of like record directly in, sort of using my voice in this case. And what I have here, as you can see, these are the inputs. So if I had a selected input that I was going to use, I would probably come here, tap this twice there. Then I'd pick my input and I'd say, okay, I'm using one and two, right? Then I'd come back out of here. And now we can see we're in one and two. Then the output would be the output I'm normally using right now, one and two output, which is the overall master output for our MPC software. And we'd hear back through that. Now, in this case, I have audio right here because I'm recording audio in the system as I'm doing the lessons it makes it easier for me to actually record in and if I had a real microphone hooked up besides this computer mic you would see the levels appear here too as well and they would also look like they're in stereo now I can always mute this some kind of way solo it compared to everything else playing if I didn't have anything playing at all unmute that and this is my monitor, so it's monitoring what's coming into the system before I record. And this is what you want to do. You want to monitor the level of the bass, or the level of the guitar, or the keyboard that's being played. You want to monitor that level so it's not above 0 dB here, and you get a really great quality audio sample. So once that's all done, I would normally come in here and go like, okay, I'm an input monitor. That means that once I start recording, it will monitor my audio. If I'm not recording, it'll cut off this mic that I'm playing back, or if I had an instrument playing, it would cut that out. So I'm going to arm it now. And this, sets, this says that I'm armed, it's ready to go, it's ready to take the sample. It's called arming the sample, or um, arm recording. Now, we're getting ready to record, so what I'll normally do is I do my MPC, I'll select the record button. And then if you have a rapper coming on or a vocalist, I would always make sure I have the metronome set up for this count-in right here. Record count-in. And since it is on, to give me a record count-in. So I'll close out of this. And now I'm ready to go. I'll press play start, and we're going to record directly into this sequence in the audio track. One to you know what to do i stop it i just stopped it that's it i'll select edit audio and now you see that audio file okay so now we want to do song form so right here i've got some sequences we play it back there's one there's a one here there's some sequences i've got directly from my mpc library that comes with your MPC drum content. Okay, so I got these sequences in here. We're going to make a song form. It's pretty easy. Now, what I want to do, I want to just press Shift here. And then we want to press the button that says on top of it, Next Sequence. But below it, it says Song. And now we're in Song Form. And what I want to do now is I want to insert a part or a section in and select what I want to play in that section. So I'm going to go ahead to Insert. And you'll notice here, it just gives me the first option it has here. It's this one thing. And what I want to do next, let's sort of like zoom in first and get a better view of this here so you can actually see what's going on. There we go. And you can see right here, that says DB Kit 4, right? So I come to here. I'm going to turn my data wheel. And I want to get one. See that? DMB Kit 2. And that says number one in front of it. That's good. I'll go to Insert. And I got my next insert. See, it copied the first thing there. I don't want that, though. I'm going to put what I want to put there. I'm going to put in two. Then the next one, I'm going to insert. I'll put here. And you guessed it. I'm going to three. And I'll do an insert again. I'll select on this one. I'm going to four, obviously. And then I'll do another insert here. I'll select this one. I'm going to go to five. And this will be my song form. It's pretty simple. I'll select it. I'll see it. 
and I'll know from here as I see it in this 16 pad window area that I see the bars, I see the BPMs of each one of those sequences. Now I can play it back. I'll just press play start. the end it will stop and that's it it's pretty simple now if I want to export this file that's easy too I may want to send this file to a guitar player yeah let him come and play some guitar but first I want to practice to it so I'll go to export right here export and now we're in the export window here you can see it's pretty obvious this is the audio length it's called audio mix down start bar is one and bar is 20 that's the length of this entire sequence of this song form we have audio tail now audio tail has to do with the idea that if I added some reverb or delay and this last part plays out and have a delay going on but the sequence is stopped and the audio is still sort of lingering in the background I want to make sure I have enough of this audio tail in there so that it does record that when I make this exported mix down file. There are none now, but be aware of that if you're going to do some sort of mix down like that. Uh, make sure I have the right outputs, which are stereo outputs 1 and 2. Next we have our master inserts, which are in any effects I have. I want to make sure those are rendered also as well. I can have separate programs, which I don't have. I can save as a project preview, which I won't do. And here I can select my file format. So I'll tap here, I have WAVE selected. I can do AIFF files, MP3s, FLACs, and an OGG file. No need for those. WAVE seems to be the most popular thing today, but I would save an MP3 if I had to for someone who needed that. We also have here a bit depth. So that's the amount of um, area we can actually squash into this file. That's our bit depth, which I'll keep that at 16. It's standard. And I'll do 44.1. Now you can also do 48. Now 40 is good too as well. 88.2 and 96 are going to be larger files I normally don't use unless someone wants them. But there's no need for that. So we're going to keep it like that. Now oh, I can also change the bit depth. Let me explain this to you too. I can change it from 8 bit, 16, 24, 32. Now 8 bit is going to have less of that quality to it. If I want to say send something that's going to be, yeah, not so great, I'll do that. But normally I'll do 16 and 24. And so, I want to export it. We're going to export right here. I want to export it to this drive right here, my MC drive. Good, I want to name it. I'll call it test. Let's save this. And I want to overwrite the last time I did that. So I'll press overwrite. And now it's overwriting the file. It's exporting the song, and now that file's there. I can go to Browse, actually. I can see MPC stuff here. And this is set to Audition. So as Audition is set to Auto, I have a level here for the Audition level. Let's close that. I'll just tap that, and now it's just going to play back. Now this is a great way for you to check to see what you got. Now in this next lesson, we're going to talk about step edit mode. And here you'll notice, of course, for our main screen, I'm going to press this button right here. As you can see, it's a little graph. And this is our step edit mode. I'm gonna press play start. And let's see for the computer, now we're looking at approximately two bars. But if you see on top of our MPCX, we're gonna see one bar at a time, actually. And let's set this bar length here to like one bar. I'll press play start. I'll 
first place start again. Now you see it's one bar because you'll see this little green little line come across here and that's when it goes past a event, it'll turn that event green and the lower portion you'll see a little green dot box where there's a green little line around each box. And that's our playback head. So you can see from here, this is track one, we're on pad number one. These are the events for pad number one. And these events are based on our time division here, as you can see here, at 16th notes. Now, of course, there's one bar here. We have our BPM right here. I can always change the master if I want to. Master would mean that every single sequence in our MPCX will be playing at this particular BPM. We just want to use the sequence BPM for this purpose. And of course, here we see the position of our playback. And if I press play start, you'll notice here it goes back to one bar. If I go to here, turn my data wheel, I'm in two bars. You'll see here, then two, two, three, four, then one, two. So the length of our bar and our position of where our playback head is at. Now, what's so cool about using the step edit mode, the ability to place events anywhere. So for example, I'm gonna start doing something here. I'm gonna use these little boxes down here and I'm gonna put an event here. I'll put one here too. More here. I'll take this one out. Take this one out. Take that one out. Hey, what's happening? I just hit it down here, right? I didn't hit it like way up there. I hit it like that. But wherever I hit it, I can change the velocity of that event. Now, of course, this is based on our full level. So to make sure your full level is off or on, I prefer it off actually when doing this. And it makes it a lot more fun. So I can come in, get rid of this, get rid of this event. I'm back to where I started at. I'll press play start. And that's how we put events in step edit. We can also change our time division too. So as you saw before, I time division here, I'll go to, let's say, 30 second notes right there. And you'll notice here it's spaced out further. And now we're only going to see half of that bar because this means that we see 32 steps for each measure or each four bars. So in this case, I'm only going to see like a little bit of it. That's four. See that? So let's see. One is one, two, then I miss three and four. We're just only getting a few of those here. So here we can see only 16 of those events. Now, if I move further up the bar then, I'll see the next 16. This is just all the same bar. See that? No matter what, it's all, this is the first bar there. I can't really move up in bars at all to see more of the events there. So let's go to here. We'll go back to 16th now. We're in 16th notes. And then here you see all the events. So when I'm in 30 second notes, you'll notice that we're gonna see these first three events. When I'm in 16, we see the first three and the last two events right there. And that means we have more steps to place more notes in. So I can go back to 30 second notes again here and I can maybe wanna put a bunch here. Now if I do that here, it's gonna sound pretty funny, but watch this. That's kind of cool for some sort of rolls. I'll press undo, 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 and undo. I'm back to where I was at. I'll hit the time division again. We'll hit 16th notes, and we're back to the same steps. Now, the reason why I showed you that, that's a great way for you to actually create rolls, test out your rolls, particularly when you're doing some sort of trap beat rolls or just drum rolls in general. This is a great way to actually go into your software using Step Edit and implement the Step Edit divisions, whether it's 16th notes or 30 second notes. I can also go in terms of trumpets too as well. Now the cool thing I want to express about was the uh, ability to go to any pad. So for example, there's a closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat right there. And so as I go to these little pads here, I have the ability, let's say, change their velocity. So I can come in here. If I hit the bottom, I get the full level. But let's say I don't want to do that. Let's go back out of here like this, and I just go to here a little bit. See? 
we can't do much in that part, right? So I'm going to go in here, pull it down, pull it down, go to here and then pull, I'll add event, pull it down at the same time. And now, you just can't really just come in here and make an event. I can tap the pads I want to do it with, but here, I can bring, now I'm going to put this one up here like this, and maybe bring this down a little bit and create some sort of, see that? I got that feel going on with the softer closed hi-hat another two closed hi-hats a little louder and then one that's louder than the other three and it gives you a different feel and this is a really cool way to get this dynamic thing going on between loud and soft which works for me a lot i like it a lot so you can try that too with your step at it but this is a great way that you step at it to create more intricate drum parts or just to get the parts right create rolls but also you can create different volumes for any step you'd like to now to change to a different pad is pretty simple i'm here in pad pass select i just select the pad pretty much as i select the pad you'll see the events for that pad i get here and i just say no more pad select now i'm able to use the pads to put any event down for this one bar sequence. I can come here and say, do this like that. And I come here. And you see, I put those events in. I took them out by just hitting the pads. Now next we're going to learn about the sampler. So here's our sampler set up on our MPCX and you can see there there is some audio coming in right there. And that of course is my voice. Now here this infinity dB, this little red arrow here is our dB level. So it's our threshold level. And what happens if I don't talk? Let's move this up a little bit higher. Now as I talk you'll notice that it's not going too loud, but once I get louder and loud enough and it crosses that threshold level, the sampler will instantly start to sample. And let's go up here. And I'm not talking loud enough, so if I get really loud, hello, and it starts to sample, we'll see it, so I'll press arm here. And now, okay, it started to sample, see that? Which is pretty cool. And so I wanna stop it, I'll press here, I've stopped it, and we can see we have a brand new sample. I can play it and here. And now, okay, it's hard to sample. See that? Okay, I can discard it or keep it. Let's get rid of it. And now it's gone. And this is our sample mode here. So that's the way I can sample using the threshold level. I can also just press this button here and get ready to go. Once I press this button here, it's sampling already. As you can see, it'll sample for the time I have set for the sample. So we'll stop that. I'll play it here. And here, it's sampling already. As you can see, obviously, let's discard that. Let's go on. Now here below the arm button, you'll see it says max length. I can tap here, I can go to minutes and seconds, depending on how big a hard drive I have set up for it. Uh, and here you can see, I can just turn my data wheel and figure out how long I want my sample to be. So in this case, I'll set it for 20 seconds, which is good. And I can also, come to here and I can click this monitor and I can monitor the signal coming into the sampler. I can hear it directly through my speaker system and get an idea of how it sounds. Now sometimes, let's turn this off, sometimes when you're actually recording into your MPCX or in any environment and you have a vocalist or a rapper or someone singing or whatever and they come in there and they're singing or rapping and they have some sort of chains on where they're gonna have probably their keys uh, a girl could have a bracelet that's clinging clinging and chingling earrings all kinds of stuff in the hair you never know and so what i tend to do also is get rid of some of these background sounds or have them remove everything from their body and just start working what i also do too is i will also set it up in case there's too much of this lip movement when they're talking and you get the lips moving right so Let's say you're doing that. Let's go to inserts. Here at inserts, first thing I'll do is I want to apply probably some sort of compression. So I'm gonna look on here and I'm gonna get a compressor going on, which should work here. And I have a compressor. 
Next thing I'll do is I may want to set up an EQ in there. So I'll look for an EQ. I think that'll work. I'll find an EQ in here. I'll get this killer EQ. I'll apply an EQ. I'll also come up here and I'll apply one more device here. I'll plug in. If I can find this plug in here for me, I can get this plug in. And here it is. I want to get a noise gate. So I have three different plugins set up here for the input of a sample. When recording it, I want to cut out certain things. So I'll close this out. And now you'll see I have this going on here, of course. My input, let's go back to monitoring. And I'm monitoring my input. It's pretty loud. So I'm going to come in my computer and bring it down. So after adding all these effects, it seems to boost the sound. So I come here, let's go to edit, and we can see it's almost maxed out here, right? So this is the in. I'll bring my in down. And as I do for my compressor, it sort of evens out a little bit more. I can change my attack a little bit. Adjust my compression. Let's go back to here. I have an EQ. So this is my EQ that I'm going to go to edit. Here's the EQ. So sometimes I want to cut some frequencies out, um, particularly on some male vocals. Could be too deep. And so you don't want to have the bottom interfere with uh, lower frequencies like a bass. So you'll come back to, let's say, your bass right here. And I may want to sort of lower or find the frequency I want to bring down or up and then change that frequency a little bit. Change its gain. Testing one, two. See if I turn the highs off. Let's go to here. Turn the bass off. And now I have less bass. Let's add more in. There's more bass. Less. A little less right there. Turn the mids out. We've got mostly highs. See? So you want to adjust your levels. Find out what works best for you. Now, I'm going to go back here and put that back in. There you go. That's much better. And we're going to look at our gate. So here's our gate. And with the gate, I want to get ready to cut out sounds in the background. So uh, tap here, and I want to get a hard gate. And now, as I try to actually talk, you don't hear anything at all. Because the gate's working. So what I want to do next is sort of like get my gate to react a lot better. So I want to come in here and change my threshold level. Testing one, two. And so it's glitching in and out. And now, you notice when I shut up, the gate cuts in. So let's bring it down a little more. And now the gate cuts in, and it stops. And I want to make sure it does it just fast enough so that nothing in the background is heard. It's pretty quiet. And so when someone raps or they sing, all you hear is what's being recorded and nothing in the background. So I used to tend to use a hard gate a lot of times with a pretty good singer and a pretty good rapper, but I may have some room noise, particularly if they're just doing a demo of the vocals, just to get an idea if the vocals will match the track, or I may want to get some ideas where I'll take pieces of the vocals and create a chorus, particularly with a vocalist. I may want to get um, create a chord and get a triad, and so I'll just take a couple of parts and I'll pitch change them. This works. So once that's done, I can come back into my sampler. Let's go back here and close it out. And now I can record. Now as I record, you'll hear me record now, then stuff will cut out. It'll sound quiet, then it'll cut. Now you can adjust that later on from home when you figure out what you want to do. This is just to give you an idea of ways you can record with effects in the insert of your sampler. Let's play that back. Now as I record, you'll hear me record now, then stuff will cut out. It'll sound quiet, then it'll cut. Now you can adjust, and you hear it right there, that was it. That's just for demos, let's throw it out, discard that sample. And that's how it works. Now next we'll do slice, pad tap, and pad hold. 